All right, what up, though? It's your man, Lewis Automatic. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's get straight into it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about this whole, really, it's a damn near 20-year-old situation, this Benzino and Eminem situation. Now, if you don't know, if you're unfamiliar, we all know who Eminem is, you know, highest selling rapper of all time, you know what I'm saying? White rapper from Detroit, 8 Mile, all that good stuff. But if you don't know, Benzino is actually uh, the co-founder of The Source. The Source magazine, which was a hip-hop staple, um, throughout the 90s and uh, early to mid 2000s was, you know what I'm saying, um, like I said, it was like the Bible of hip hop. And Benzino actually uh, co-founded that with Dave uh, Dave Mays, um, a white guy from uh, Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. I believe they started like in Harvard or some shit. But anyways, um, you know, Benzino and Eminem, they've had this back and forth with this just, this, this shit was actually, um, I think it was real pivotal in hip hop, I feel like, after this. Um, this is what, uh, changed the publication game, you feel me? Like, this was like, this had a lot of impact, this beef right here. And the reason why I say that is because it seemed out of nowhere. Like, I didn't really get the, uh, full picture of why Benzino felt like it was his mission to go against Eminem. Um, as the source, they basically dedicated, you know what I'm saying, entire issues to basically tear Eminem down. Now, at the time, you know, Eminem, 50 Cent, Aftermath, they were like the powerhouse of the industry. So, you know, um, like that's when, you know, I say the publication game changed because that's when actually XXL rose to bigger prominence. Because, the, like I said, it was the source, XXL were kind of like, you know what I'm saying, they were kind of neck and neck, but the source was still above, you know what I'm saying? But then after Aftermath and Interscope put all their uh, money and resources into XXL, that's what actually tipped the scale, so to speak. And, you know, um, just to give a little background on Benzino, you know, I feel like he is from Boston, you feel me? So that is going to uh, tint his uh, lens, so to speak. There is a certain bias that comes from him being from Boston. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, Boston has a lot of racism. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's undeniable, you feel me? Like, the stories that you hear about Boston. And I don't think Benzino is a bad guy. I don't think he's a bad guy at all. I think he is, um, you know what I'm saying, he is from the streets, you feel me? I've seen different DVDs where, you know, Benzino, he's a guy from the streets, you know. He's from the streets of Boston or whatever. And, you know, he's like, it's kind of crazy. Like, I don't know, like, why, I, don't, I just don't like, even like before, like, the whole racist shit came out with the tapes and shit. It seemed like he still had the bone to pick with Eminem, which, from his perspective, I do have to give credence to some of the things that he's saying because it does make sense that these white corporations like MTV, Viacom, like, you know what I'm saying, they would, VH1, they would just blow Eminem out the water because they finally got one, quote-unquote. They finally got the white rapper with the skill set and the credibility through being signed through somebody like Dr. Dre to actually, you know what I'm saying, make an impact. And, you know... I'm sure there was some cultural bias as far as the record labels and wanting to promote Eminem, but at the same time, it's good business, you know. Just to be quite frank, like, I mean, America, like, especially, like, at that time, the super majority white, you feel me? And if you could find an artist that could identify with that, you know what I'm saying, target demographic and shit, I mean, 85% of the records were bought by white people anyway. So if you could find an artist that fit that mold and could sell to those people, I mean, why wouldn't you do it? I mean, at the end of the day, Dr. Dre... I mean, you know what I'm saying, like, doctor, you could blame MTV and VH1 for all these, for trying to promote Eminem, but at the end of the day, Dr. Dre is who discovered him and signed him, you feel me? So it's like, like, Dr. Dre saw the business uh, potential in that as well, so that's just something to take into account. But anyways, like I said, Benzino had some valid points, but I just feel like he was just anti-white rapper, which, you feel me, like, I mean, as a black man in hip-hop, this is our shit, you feel me? So, like, our shit is supposed to be protected and shit. So, it's like, you can't really debate on it. It's like, on one hand, it's like, you want a field dog, but it's like, it was just hate, though. You feel me? That's what that's one thing that you just can't, you know what I'm saying, get around. Like, tell me something, get an Eminem show, two mics. Like, come on, bro. Like, that was before any type of, you know what I'm saying, racist commentary or exposure. Like, you just ain't like that dude to say you're going to give his album two mics, even though it got four mics. But I remember, like, the, um, uh, what was that, the Made Men album? That shit got, like, four and a half, damn near five mics. And so it's like, on one hand, it's like, you want to say, like, Eminem ain't got no good records, or you don't listen to that shit, blah, 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 whoop, whoop. All right, that's good. But then on your end, it's like, you gave your own shit, damn near five mics, and nobody ever talks about that. You feel me? Like, nobody even speaks, 
nobody even speaks about that group in no legendary type status. So I just feel like the the source, like he was right when he said he should have separated the source from whatever his personal beef was with Eminem because all that did was make the source lose credibility because it seemed like as a journalist and as a newspaper or not even a newspaper, as a magazine, yeah, y'all supposed to comment on shit, but y'all not supposed to have that such a bias to where you feel me? Like, you just rally against one artist or one team and shit. And, like, I ain't like how you said, like, the culture of hip-hop. Eminem ain't fuck with the culture of hip-hop, and that's not what he grew up in. Like, come on, bro. This is a dude who proof used to sneak this nigga into Osborne and shit. You feel me? Like, back in the days and shit. Like, Ebony Showcase, Hip-Hop Shop, Rap Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Like, now I, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to uh, scribble jams, all that shit. And I have to say, though. Like, Benzino, he did do some research and shit when he talked about, like, that racist tape. I remember I heard that shit, bro. That shit was fucked up. Eminem was, like, my favorite rapper at the time, you feel me? That shit really, like, dejected, you know, me personally. Cause I'm like, damn. And, you know, like I said, like, niggas was still young, impressionable minds. I remember that Yellow Brick Road shit. I remember all that shit. So, like, I ain't never necessarily feel like that was a good excuse either to say what he said. Like, black girls are bitches, you know what I'm saying? All that wild shit. But, you know... I have, like, it's, it's really no debate about that, you feel me? Like, that shit was inexcusable. But you do have to, like, you know what I'm saying, take into account that was made when he was, he said he was 16. Now, Benzino said that they did the research and found out that shit was 21, you feel me? So, like, that shit is really, like, fucked up and shit. But, you know what I'm saying, on, this, on, the, uh, on the flip side to that, we don't know if, like, we assume him and him is a change, man. I can't say that. He, he did, he did do what a lot of rappers do. Would never do, you feel me? Say they're gonna do it, but they never did, which was. He came back and got his team, you feel me? And put his team in position to get their own platinum plaques to go on tours. He came back, got Royce, Obi, like, Eminem did make some black millionaires along the way, you feel me? He did put niggas in position. 50, like, come on, like, I think Eminem, he really, like, loved his hip hop shit and he paid homage to this shit. So, like, just to just try to discredit all that just because you your own personal bias, I don't feel like that's right. But, um, like I said, it's no debate in uh, Benzino's uh, street cred or, like, you know, um, it's, it's, like, it's no debate in, like, uh, a black man representing, you know what I'm saying, for black people in hip-hop, especially against this corporate, you know what I'm saying, these corporate juggernauts who basically just try to, you know what I'm saying, tear niggas down and shit or, like, just take, you know what I'm saying, take from the community and never try to give nothing back. So, like, him fighting that fight is commendable. But, you know, like, it just seemed like, it really just seemed like hate because he just so happened to be right, basically. Because he talk about a lot, like, he from Boston so he could see it. So, like, he just so happened to, you know what I'm saying, have a hunch that was correct, you feel me? Which, I don't know, maybe that is some Boston shit. I mean, you never know. Like, I'm not here to really play no size. It's just my opinion on what I see, you feel me? Um, like, to this Royce the 5'9 situation. I do, I will say, like, it would be nice to hear Eminem speak up for itself. You know, like, it seemed like anything, anytime somebody has something negative to say about Eminem or, you know what I'm saying, it always seemed like Royce the 5'9 is on the forefront speaking for Eminem. Except for, like, that Snoop Dogg shit. Like, when Snoop dissed Eminem, like, Eminem came right back on the new record, you know what I'm saying, dissed uh, Snoop and shit. But, you know what I'm saying, like, Eminem can speak for itself, dog. Like, I don't feel like... He should have no nobody else speaking to the public for him and shit. So, um, as far as, like, the debate between, like, or it was supposed to be, like, a versus Benzino versus Royce, like, stop it, dog. There's no comparison. Like, Royce is, like, one of the greatest MCs of all time. So, even if, you know what I'm saying, ain't necessarily, like, bangers and shit. Like, I'm a, I don't know, I'm a Royce fan. Royce is my favorite rapper, like, for a period of time. So, it's like, I just know, like, what he bring to the table as far as musically. Like, but, like... Benzino made the point of, you know, he and Eminem sold 600000 with Bad Meets Evil. But then, like, I guess six, six weeks later, he was only able to sell, um, I don't know, what was it, like 18000 and some shit. And, you know, Royce, like, Royce, he ain't never been, like, a big opening week type of nigga. You feel me? Especially, like, he never really, I mean, with the Rock City shit, he had, like, a couple singles. I guess they was moving around Detroit or whatever, but... You know what I'm saying? Niggas never really look at Royce for, like, sales and shit. We just look at him for the bars and shit, you feel me? Which is, like, I mean, Benzino, you a legend in hip-hop because of the source, you feel me? Like, not because of music, not because of, you know what I'm saying, he just had some ill bars. or he, Just, like, it's just the source, bro. 
Like he muscled his way into the source and that's just what it was. Niggas respect that, you feel me? But I don't know, that's just my take on this Eminem uh Benzino shit. Like, like I said, it's like no disrespect to Benzino, no disrespect to Eminem, you feel me? I just feel like Dog was aggy, you know what I'm saying? He was just aggy, you feel me? And, you know what I'm saying, half of it was, like, justified, which is, like, okay, okay y'all pumping this white boy up to be, basically, take away from the black culture and be the champion of black culture. But on the same time, it's like, nigga, that shit just was for no reason and shit, you feel me? Like, like, not for no reason, but it's like, that shit just came out the blue. Like, you ain't never, you ain't never had, you ain't even give Dog a chance, basically, you feel me? So, I don't know, that's just my two cents on this shit. Tell me what you think.